I often say that didactic is a four-letter word in the art world. That's actually what I try to focus on. And I say I work with didacticism because that's this one area where most artists in the fine art world try to stay away from. So to be able to work in this area that is forbidden is kind of fun. I do try to make work that proposes questions or can spark conversations. I got into art because my mother is an artist and a curator and art historian. Her name is Deborah Willis, and she's actually now the chair of the photography department that I went to as an undergrad. A lot of my mother's research in her books about the history of black photographers and the way that African Americans are imaged in photography was really part of my upbringing. Commerce and marketing and branding affects the way that we see ourselves, and especially the way that African Americans are imaged in, in mainstream media. And so I did this branded series which is just all these images that look like ads that talk about aspects of African-American history. I look at logos as our generation's hieroglyphs because they are embedded with a meaning that you can take all across the world and still maintain that. And so I use the Michael Jordan Jumpman logo as this kind of really very uh, popular image or archetype of a black male in success. And so he's reaching for a star, is trying to make that slam dunk, and then there's this other man, but rather than having a basketball, having a gun, shooting him down. So I call it Shooting Stars. One of my first images from the branded series was an image called Absolute Power, where I took an image of how slaves were packed into the slave ship Brooks, and I co-opted it to make an absolute seeming ad. And then it became a point where truth was better than fiction, so I started to actually use real ads in the Unbranded series. It's called Unbranded Reflections in Black by Corporate America from 1968 to 2008. And I took two ads for every year from the year Martin Luther King was killed until the year that Barack Obama was elected president, coincidentally, and removed all the branding information. It was a way of tracking blackness as a corporate idea over the course of the past 40 years. One of the things I was really struck by was that 1968 was like the kind of the peak or the beginning of this black power movement. And you could see corporate America beginning to figure out ways to cash in on this idea of black power. And at that time specifically, most of the people who were making these decisions on Madison Avenue were white men. I often say with my work, I'm trying to, to use the language of advertising to talk about things that advertising couldn't responsibly talk about. I think when I was 24, my cousin was murdered um, and that shifted the base of kind of more of my kind of easygoing kind of just exploration of photography and images related to African Americans. And then I started to do more work that is about loss and family history and memory. Winter in America is a stop motion animation project that I did with another artist named Kambu Ilujimi. I ain't had fun like this in a long time. That's what I'm saying though, right? You had crazy fun tonight, right? We used the G.I. Joe action yeah, figures that I played with when I was a little boy hold on, hold on. to tell the last five minutes of my cousin's life as was told to me by the guys he was with when they got robbed. It's us as men playing as we did as boys in this cute format to tell this very serious story. Stay down. He's shining, man. Come on, bro. How you gonna do that to him, man? He just got that chain. <laughs> How you gonna do that? Man, just give up your fucking chain. This is fucked up, man. And child's play death is insignificant. You can always just pick the toy back up and play again. And we forget that we kind of train kids in our society to play with toys that, you know, demand them create scenarios based on violence before they can even really read. And perhaps there's a nat natural aspect of that, but I think we also um, help to cultivate that mindset, that violent mindset in our country with the toys, especially our boys play with. And now it's a winter. Winter in America. Lord knows from winter in America. My show wound up in Black History Month. I wanted the show to be called The Myth of a Black History. Black History is American history. So this idea of a Black History Month is becoming less and less relevant in the 21st century than it really needed to be in the 20th century. It was crazy because it was like, okay, this is Black History Month three months after the election of the first black president. So I have to make work that's like 
somehow references that. I mean, the show is called Pitch Blackness. The title of my book is also called Pitch Blackness, and it was published by Aperture for the Aperture West Book Prize last year. Pitch Blackness first came from a feeling of loss I had when my cousin was murdered, and I um, felt like I didn't know where, who I was and how to find my way home, so to speak. And then Pitch Blackness, because advertising, which is a theme in a lot of my work, blackness is often pitched as a way to kind of cash in on these kind of the street cool or whatever ideas that are associated with this notion of blackness. And then lastly, uh, pitch blackness, off-whiteness, coffee is the color of my skin, which is this kind of mantra that I've been trying to push and that um, there are, aren't any truly white people and there aren't any truly black people. This idea of pitching blackness, getting rid of this idea, getting rid of whiteness as idea, and kind of just letting people be who they are is kind of really a theme that I'm trying to push and still be realistic about it. And we know that race will always exist, but we have to also remember that it's absurd. Um, so the, the series behind me is uh, a series of paintings that were inspired by a photograph by Ernest Withers of, about the uh, protest in 1968 in Memphis. And there's a famous photograph of over 100 African-American men holding these signs saying, I am a man. And that image was taken eight years before I was born. And it strikes me as pretty amazing that just eight years before I was born, it was still necessary for people to make large public protests to affirm their humanity. And then when I, I grew up, the phrase wasn't, I am a man, it's, it was, I am the man. And how in 20 years it went from this kind of collective affirmation of, of all of our humanity to this kind of more selfish, boasting kind of statement of, I'm the man, you, you are less than me. And so um, I started to riff off that. So I, have, I am the man, um, I am a man, then be a man, ain't I a woman? It's kind of this uh, evolution of thought to starting to be about me or then trying to put it about you, but then just essentially resolving being happy to exist, which is kind of, where I'm trying to rest right now. I am, amen. Yes, and ain't nobody fighting Cause nobody knows what to say Save your soul